Hi everyone and welcome to Miss Estric Biology. I'm going to be going through prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells in this video for GCSE Biology. If you are new here then click subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the latest videos and follow me on Instagram and TikTok so you can see all the latest quizzes and support. So let's have a look then at some of the key differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Now, first of all, just to let you know, this is just a way to group cells based on similarities or differences in their structures. So eukaryotic cells, this is plant and animal cells, and you'll be familiar with that from key stage three. Whereas prokaryotic cells, that would be bacteria cells. Some of the key structures that you have in animal and plant cells, which are our eukaryotic cells, are the cell membranes. They have cytoplasm, and this is the key one here. Their genetic material, so the DNA, is found in the nucleus. And if we compare this to a prokaryotic cell like bacteria, first of all, they are much, much smaller in size. So bacteria cells are much smaller than plant and animal cells. But also, there are some differences. There are some similarities, though, also. So they do both have cytoplasm. They both have cell membranes. Now, only plant cells have a cell wall, whereas all the prokaryotic cells will have a cell wall. The big difference is prokaryotic cells do not have a nucleus. They do still have genetic material, which sometimes is DNA but you will just find that as a single loop loose within the cytoplasm. They also sometimes have an extra circular loop of DNA, which is called a plasmid. So if you were asked in an exam question to identify similarities between eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells, the best two to go for would be cell membranes and cytoplasm because that is consistent across plants, animals, and bacterial cells. If you were asked in an exam question to point out a difference between these two types of cells, the best option would be, for say, would be to say that eukaryotic cells have a nucleus that contains genetic material, whereas prokaryotic cells do not have a nucleus, and their genetic material is just a single loop, which you find in the cytoplasm. So if we have a look then, at these two different types of cells. And we said eukaryotic cells are plant cells and animal cells. So the cytoplasm is the liquid part that we can see here. The cell membrane is the layer which controls the passage of substances into and out of a cell. And then inside of the nucleus, that is where you find the genetic material. Now you'll notice that there are other structures here, so mitochondria and ribosomes, but I go into detail on that in another video. And I'll link that up here, so if you do want to see that GCSE video looking at plant and animal cells in more detail, go and take a look. So prokaryotic cells, we said bacterial cells. Now they do still have a cytoplasm, which is the site of most chemical reactions. They have a cell membrane, which is the layer that controls what can enter and exit the cell. They also have a cell wall to provide some structural support. And here is their genetic material, which we said is a single loop. Now it looks a bit more complicated than that, just because it's a very big loop, which is quite tangled up. But the key thing is it's not found inside of a nucleus. Some bacteria also have a plasmid, which is this circular loop of DNA. Now you do not always find plasmids, so that's only sometimes in bacteria. And you might notice these tail-like structures. These are flagella, and those are again only sometimes found and they're to help the bacteria to swim and move around. So because it's only sometimes found, you wouldn't get a mark for necessarily saying that. You would get marks for pointing out the key structures which are always present, which is cytoplasm, cell membrane, cell wall, and genetic material in a single loop, but not inside of a nucleus. Now I said that bacteria cells or prokaryotic cells are much, much smaller. So let's have a look at this scale to put that into context. So here is the eukaryotic cell, and that can range between 100 micrometers to 10 micrometers. 
So some cells are much bigger. So for example, a human egg cell is a much larger cell. Prokaryotic cells are around one micrometer. So they can be around 100 times smaller in size. So it is a big difference. Now, other things just to point out on this scale, you will learn within the GCSE about different microscopes, a light microscope and an electron microscope. And this is just showing you compared to what you can see with your human eye. So as in with no assisted help, just with your eye compared to what you could see using a light microscope. And those are the microscopes that you typically have in school. An electron microscope is much, much more powerful, has a higher magnification and a higher resolution. And they're much more expensive, so you would not have one of these in school. But because they have a higher resolution and magnification, you're able to see much, much smaller objects um, and they're still clear. Now, I'll be doing a video on microscopes later on. I'll also be doing a video to do with these different units. So if you aren't familiar with a micrometer or a nanometer, I'll be covering that in one of my GCSE videos. So take a look at my playlists to find that. So that is it for our prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Hope you found it helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up.